The painting is a beautiful example of the master of St. Giles' style, which was influenced by both Flemish and French traditions. The painting depicts the baptism of Clovis, the first king of the Franks, by St. Remigius, a bishop and missionary who converted him to Christianity. The painting shows the moment when Clovis is about to receive the holy water from the bishop's hand, while surrounded by other important figures from his life and reign. The painting is rich in detail and color, with a focus on the figures and their clothing. The figures are arranged in a way that creates a sense of depth and space. The painting is also notable for its use of light and shadow, which adds to the sense of realism. The painting has a warm tone, with bright colors for the figure's garments and accessories, and cool colors for the background elements. The painting has several artistic features that reveal its historical and cultural context. For example, the painting shows Clovis wearing a jeweled crown over his chin-length brown hair, which indicates his royal status and his connection to Charlemagne, who also wore crowns with jewels. The painting shows Clovis holding a sword in his right hand, which symbolizes his military prowess and his role as a defender of Christianity against paganism. The painting shows Clovis being baptized by St. Remigius in a sandstone-colored basin with hands together in prayer, which represents their religious devotion and their mutual respect. The painting shows St. Remigius wearing a cardinal red tunic over a long-sleeved white garment, which signifies his authority as a bishop and his influence on Clovis's conversion. The painting shows St. Remigius holding a golden bowl of liquid to pour it onto Clovis's head, which suggests that he is performing anointing or consecration on him. The painting shows St. Remigius holding up his left hand with his palm facing Clovis, which implies that he is blessing him or offering him something. The painting shows St. Remigius wearing a jeweled gold and silver pointed hat that splits up the sides to expose red lining, which indicates that he belongs to the aristocracy or the clergy. The painting shows St. Remigius wearing a richly brocaded red and gold cloak with royal blue lining, which reveals his wealth and status. The painting shows St. Remigius's bronze-colored medallion hanging at his chest that has an image of a man's head and torso, which could be either himself or Charlemagne. The painting shows St. Remigius's cloak being embroidered with two men on the lapels one holding a sword one holding a large key in one hand, and a book in the other, which could represent the keys of heaven, earth, and hell, or the keys of St. Peter, St. Paul, and St. John. The painting shows another man wearing a brocaded robe holding back the sleeve of the bishop's raised hand, which could indicate that he is assisting him or protecting him from getting wet. The painting shows four more men wearing robes standing in a tight cluster behind the bishop, which could suggest that they are his followers or advisors. The painting shows an older man in this group, with graying hair, holding a curling, gold staff, which could signify that he is a senior member of the clergy or a nobleman. The painting shows five men looking onto the scene from a balcony above this group, along the right edge of the panel, which could imply that they are witnesses or spectators of the event. The painting shows a row of greenish silver organ pipes lining the balcony behind them, which could indicate that there is music playing during the ceremony. The painting shows a shorter or kneeling man with his hair shaved into a ring around his head wearing a white gown and holding a large, thick book to his chest which could represent that he is a monk or a scribe who is recording the event or reading from the scriptures. The painting shows a woman looking on with her hair pulled back under a gold-colored veil behind Clovis and to our left, which could suggest that she is his wife or a relative. The painting shows two men next to her right wearing fur-trimmed cloaks of rich reds and dark green, and each touching Clovis's arm, which could indicate that they are his friends or allies. The painting shows more people gathering in a courtyard outside the church entrance to watch the ceremony, who wear cloaks and leggings in rose pink, emerald green, light blue, or tan, which could reflect their social status or their regional affiliation. The painting shows one man at the front of the crowd holding a long-handled weapon with an axe blade and spear tip, which could symbolize his readiness to fight or his loyalty to Clovis. The painting shows other stone buildings around the courtyard, which could represent the architecture or the culture of the place where the event occurred. The painting shows a peacock perching on an archway over the crowd, in the distance, which could symbolize beauty, pride, or immortality. The peacock is a bird that has been used as a symbol in art, culture, and religion for various reasons. Some of the common meanings associated with the peacock are Beauty, the peacock's colorful and iridescent feathers are admired for their aesthetic appeal and elegance. The peacock's display is often seen as a sign of self-expression, confidence, and grace. 
many artists have depicted the peacock as a symbol of beauty in their paintings, sculptures, and other forms of art. Rebirth, the peacock's feathers are also seen as a symbol of rebirth or transformation. In some cultures, such as Hinduism and Buddhism, the peacock is associated with the goddess Lakshmi, who represents abundance and prosperity. The peacock is also linked to the concept of reincarnation, as it sheds its old feathers and grows new ones every year. Wealth, the peacock's feathers are also seen as a symbol of wealth and status. In ancient times, the peacock was considered a sacred animal in India, where it was used to adorn thrones and royal attire. The peacock was also valued for its meat, which was believed to have medicinal properties. In some European countries, such as France and England, the peacock was used as a heraldic emblem by nobility and royalty. Pride, the peacock's feathers are also seen as a symbol of pride or arrogance. In some cultures, such as China and Japan, the peacock is associated with the idea of vanity or self-importance. The peacock's display is often seen as a challenge or provocation to others. In some religious traditions, such as Christianity and Islam, the peacock is seen as a symbol of sin or temptation. These are some of the main meanings that have been given to the peacock in art throughout history. However, there may be other interpretations depending on the context and perspective of the viewer or artist. The peacock is a versatile and fascinating creature that can inspire different emotions and reactions from different people. The painting shows the contrast between the sacred and the secular, the old and the new, the east and the west. The baptism of Clovis is a pivotal moment in the history of Europe, as it marks the beginning of the Christianization of the Franks and the foundation of the Merovingian dynasty. The painting shows how Clovis and his followers adopt the new faith and culture of the Roman Empire, while retaining some of their own traditions and customs. The painting also shows how the church and the state are intertwined, as the bishop and the king are both powerful and influential figures. The painting shows the influence of both Flemish and French traditions on the master of St. Giles's style. The master of St. Giles was an anonymous painter who worked in Paris in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. He is known for his realistic and detailed depictions of people and scenes, as well as his use of perspective and light. The painting shows his Flemish influence in his attention to the textures and patterns of the fabrics, the jewelry, and the architecture. The painting also shows his French influence in his use of bright and vivid colors, his depiction of the landscape and the sky, and his incorporation of classical and biblical motifs. The painting shows the use of symbolism and allegory to convey meaning and message. The painting is not only a historical representation of the baptism of Clovis, but also a moral and religious lesson for the viewers. The painting shows how Clovis renounces his pagan past and embraces his Christian future, how he receives the grace and the guidance of God, and how he becomes a model of piety and virtue. The painting also shows how the baptism of Clovis is a sign of God's favor and protection for the Franks, and how it foreshadows their future glory and prosperity. The painting uses various symbols and allegories to convey these meanings, such as the peacock, the sword, the keys, the crown, the bowl, the book, and the organ. The baptism of Clovis was a momentous occasion that changed the course of history. As the holy water touched his head, he felt a surge of warmth and light in his soul. He opened his eyes and saw the bishop smiling at him, the monk holding the book, the woman with the veil, and the men with the cloaks. They all looked at him with admiration and respect. He also saw the crowd outside the church, cheering and applauding. He heard the music from the organ, filling the air with joy and praise. He realized that he was not only a king, but also a leader of a new faith and a new people. He stepped out of the basin and embraced the bishop, thanking him for his guidance and blessing. He then turned to the monk and asked him to write down his story, so that future generations would remember his conversion and his deeds. He then walked towards the woman with the veil, who was his wife, Clotilde. She had been the one who had introduced him to Christianity and had prayed for his salvation. He kissed her tenderly and told her that he loved her and that he was grateful for her support and influence. He then greeted the men with the cloaks, who were his friends and allies. They congratulated him and pledged their loyalty and devotion. He then raised his sword and his crown and addressed the crowd. He declared that he was now a Christian king and that he would rule with justice and mercy. He also announced that he would build a new church in honor of St. Remigius and that he would donate his wealth and treasures to the poor and the needy. He also invited everyone to join him in celebrating his baptism and his new life. 
the crowd erupted in cheers and applause and followed him to the banquet hall where a feast was prepared. The peacock, which had been watching the ceremony from the archway, flew down and landed on his shoulder. It spread its feathers and displayed its beauty and pride. Clovis smiled and stroked its head and took it as a sign of good fortune and divine favor. He then entered the hall with his wife, his friends, and his people, and rejoiced in his baptism and his destiny. He felt a peace and a happiness that he had never felt before. He knew that he had made the right choice, and that he had fulfilled his purpose. He had become a new man, a new king, and a new saint. He had become the founder of a new dynasty, a new nation, and a new era. He had become the father of France, 